What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another pregame show with Miss Junebug and myself, Boys for Life. How are you doing, Miss Junebug? How you been since the last time we talked? Um, ready for football. Like I hate bye weeks. Who like who lives like this? You know, like why, why? But I'm no, ready, I know ready I was for Sunday. Yeah, I was I was at work and I was like, well, at least I can finally get work done on Sunday. I don't got to take a, a three and a half hour break uh, and watch <laughs> and watch the game on my phone. So, um, oh yeah, a lot. I guess a lot of stuff that? is heating up. A lot of stuff is heating up with the Cowboys. Um, we tried to get Brandon Cooks before the trade deadline, didn't happen. So now, so now it seems like all our sights are all set on OBJ, and you you seem kind of excited. You know, I I posted this on my Twitter. And first and foremost, shout out to all the veterans. I am wearing my Army Green Dag today because, you know, we want to definitely salute all of y'all. Thank you so much for your services. So shout out to all the veterans. I know that Cowboys Nation definitely has a lot of them out there. And uh, just we salute you. So and then it's also 11-11-2022, which is a great day for manifestation. So I'm huge on that. So. <laughs> I manifested a Super Bowl. You know, I just, I'm seeing that far ahead. Like, let's just manifest. Let's go big or go home. So I've been manifesting all day, journaling. It's super cold in Dallas. Where are you at? I'm in San Antonio. And it just, I have the window open right now because I'm in my kitchen. So I have the window open. It's about 50 some odd degrees right now. I can feel the cold. Like it's, I mean, it's colder outside than it is in here. So that's why I have my window open. I'm getting the AC hitting from one side. And I got the window air hitting me from the other side. So it just, it feels amazing. I love it. I love it. I was, I went to the, like I said, I went to the mall to go get my brand new poorly constructed phone and I was in flip flops and this t-shirt and sweats. So I, I, I love this weather. I love it. I love this weather too. So yeah. No. So yeah. Back to like everything. I'm glad. I hope you get your phone figured out. Cause that's the worst. Like we it are is so- the worst attached to our phones it's ridiculous yeah no like normally like i listen to like to go to sleep i put on like people that have monotone voice and like they tell scary stories so i listen to that like true scary stories like break-ins and all kind of weird stuff so i listen to that stuff to fall yeah to fall asleep and now i can't even do that because i got nothing i got i got nothing but before we keep going shout out to the great duke bothers uh, World War One peace treaty was signed on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. Oh, wow. That's and good. you were talking about manifesting a Super Bowl. I have been trying to manifest the OBJ signing. And this we both want to talk about this. So. so I, okay, so yes, we definitely want to talk about this because I tweeted back August 8th, okay, 8822, uh-huh. um, that Dal- OBJ would be great in Dallas. You know, Uh nobody liked my tweet. Nobody said anything. It was whatever, okay? Then about when free agency started coming around and we knew, you know, we had some choices, I talked about OBJ again and then Cowboys Nation again talk all this shit about OBJ is not, you know, Dallas fit, whoop-de-whoop. I stuck to OBJ. You know, I follow his TikTok I love me some Lola Wood. I love his girl. I love like his family side. I love his passion. I love his energy. He is such a a passionate player. And we don't have that. We don't have a passionate player. I love Dak, but Dak is so politically correct and media trained. It's like he is so cautious with his words. You know, and and we look at Micah, but he's still young. So I definitely feel like OJ, uh, OJ's, OBJ's uh, presence in Dallas would be huge, 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 huge. Not just because of what he can bring to the table, but also just his overall aura, presence, demeanor, you know, drive, determination. That is contagious, contagious it's infectious, and we need that on the team. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. Um, we haven't had this kind of passion the way OBJ is with whatever team he goes to since Des Bryant. Let's be real. Since Des Bryant, 
We haven't had anything like that. I mean, it's crazy to sit here. People sit there and say, oh, Des Bryant was a problem. He was this, he's that. No, he was passionate. He was a lifelong Dallas Cowboy fan is, is what he was. He grew up like here. Like T.O. Like, you don't <laughs> get those type. T.O. I mean, like, the playmaker. I mean, hello. Yeah. Hello. I mean, we don't have that. So, I mean, it's just like we need that type of drive. We need that type of commitment. We need that just presence on the field and that experience that he brings, you yeah. know, to the table. So I'm a huge fan. Sign him up. I even welcome him on behalf of Cowboys Nation already. Like, I know it's a deal. It's a wrap. Jerry is just fucking pulling our strings, and I love it, you know? And see, and, and, the and, whole and, squad behind him. So I think it's great. Yeah. I, I've, I've been watching, of course, been keeping up with the Twitter stuff and – watching every single Cowboy fan wide receiver out there that is, you know, pretty much trying to recruit him over here to the Cowboys. Um, but then, like you talked, you bring up Jerry Jones. That's kind of – that's that's a kind of the X factor for me, him and Steven Jones, because I've seen this done before. And I've seen it where they've done too much talking to where you're like, nah, this isn't going to happen. But I feel like they're going over the top right now because – this is just too much talking for me to sit here and say, well, you know, I I think this could happen. If they if they're just if they just keep talking too much, like I mean, but normally when they don't talk, shit gets done. And so I'm still on the fence about as much as I want him here, and it's not because I feel like, oh, he's this number one wide receiver, he's going to go out and the remainder of what we have eight uh, six games, seven seven games left. I'm I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and say oh he's gonna go seven games, hundred yards each game. No, I feel like he's gonna be your number two option because you have your CD Lamb who's your number one, um, and and I feel like he's gonna be that guy that when it's crunch time you go to him. He's not gonna be the the OBJ of five six seven years ago. No, no, and that's definitely him knowing his role is is important and. You know, he he's coming off injury again. We definitely know that he is, you know, it's going to be a slow start. It's not like he's had like the preseason and all of that, you know, yeah. so he still has to get some reps in. So I think that as long as he knows his role and and him being such a playmaker and, and having that experience when we really need it on crunch time if it does happen then i think that he will be a great weapon to have in our arsenal because we do have cd we have noah we have i mean just so many we have tony i mean like everybody wants to just get a touchdown i mean Dak is even running them in so i mean it's like it, this is just a a, a a setup for the playoffs you know yeah, yeah. No, i feel you so hold on, the, the great Duke, but this is one of my boys right here. What are you shaking your head at? Like, I don't know if, I don't think he's a fan of bringing OBJ. This is one of the OGs right here. Like he's been on YouTube for the longest time, longer than I've been on here. I've only been on here What's six he years. What's he say? Tell me. So I, I like him, myself, and a few others, like we are pretty much realists on what, what the Cowboys are and – what kind of moves we know they can make. And I think he's kind of like, see, he doesn't want OBJ. I mean, he, he's more of a, he likes our guys and I get it. Like he likes our guys. I like our guys too, but at the same time, We're I feel stagnant. like bringing, we are stagnant, but I feel like bringing someone in of OBJ can, I'm not saying it's going to put us into this like, great offense that now we're going to be putting up 30, 45 points a game. No, I think he's just going to elevate us a little bit more because he is a name that commands respect. Oh, oh no. Sorry. Sorry. So I read that wrong. I do want OBJ. That's what oh, I'm saying. No, I'm sorry. Okay. I do. I re That's my fault. You I read that wrong. No, I do. Okay. I read that wrong. I, okay. Uh, he, he would be ready for playoff time and we could really, yeah, I get him. Okay. That's my fault. That's my fault, Duke. Um, but yeah, no, he's right. He w is a guy that would be ready for playoff time, and we could use him in those playoff time. Look, we've done great in the draft. We've done excellent in the draft because look at where we're at. This, a lot of the guys that have stepped up for us have been draft 
drafted by the Dallas Cowboys. Now you go out and get a free agent like OBJ, this guy will put us over the top. And I'm not you like you said, you're manifesting Super Bowl. I'm over here manifesting trying to get OBJ into the end in, in here no, that that's will help, a done deal. help that's us a like in the we're playoffs. negotiating right now we're just signing paperwork we're just i mean this is selling stories this is selling this is giving fucking everybody something to talk about we're always at the tip of everybody's mouth we are america's team obj is you know he will be a fool not to come here can you tell me who else who else besides us is more alluring well, they got Kansas City. Yeah, but no. You got Buffalo with no. when they were on the cusp Didn't there. Did they just lose their quarterback? Well, I mean, I mean, he's not no, going to be out the whole done. season. Like they got cool. <laughs> so, and now, like, and I don't even know, I don't even know where this came from, but I've been hearing San Francisco, like again, and like I said, no, I haven't been hearing he to, where this came from. No, we have the hottest defense. I mean, like, I just really feel like we're a contender. And the he, weather. The weather. the weather. His daddy is from here. He was saying that his daddy lives in, uh, I took notes, in yeah. somewhere he lives around here. Yeah, no, his, he his, wants to his, be out here. And his he daddy side of the family is from yep, over here. Yeah, yeah. I actually wrote it down. But anyways, daddy, talk to him. Pops, talk to him. We need to bring him over here. So, yes. So, great place to raise a family, too. So, I just really feel like we definitely need OBJ in the big D. Yeah. Anyway. No, uh, and, and, and the kicker is, like, I don't know if Buffalo is a great place to raise a family. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I mean, I wouldn't want to raise a family over in California. How cold in 50 degrees. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't yeah, know. I wouldn't want to raise a right family now. over in San Francisco and Cali. I, I wouldn't do that. He's in LA. Well, like, I mean, like, I mean, who oh, the hell lives, leaves LA weather anyway? Oh, and you Texas, know? let's, let's remember, Texas doesn't have state income. So that's another thing. He's going to be making more money exactly. here, even if he got we the same income. deal somewhere else. Tax. We don't have state income tax here. Yes. So that's another reason to come here. I mean, and and like like he said, he's looking somewhere where he can finish out his career, and in, in in a city where he can you know raise a family or whatever it is. And yeah, I think just, Texas, I mean, yeah. D- Dallas is a great place to do that. Absolutely, man. Absolutely, man. I'm such a note taker, and I really actually did write down where his dad was from. It was two hours outside of Texas, but yeah, we definitely did. You know. But anyways, OBJ. Okay, so just real quick, and what number is he gonna be? Oh, I don't know. That's what that's what like, I've been thinking. I, was just I mean, like, three's taken, thirteen's taken. Uh three is taken, thirteen's taken. Yeah. They were saying eighty-eight. I was like, no, 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 no. Um, well, two's taken, one's taken. Out. I, I don't know. Maybe a five. Maybe a. a a 10 or an 11? No, 11 seconds. No, 11. Oh, sorry. That, that Parsons. I'm sorry. I'm just, I was just saying numbers off the top of my head. That's the thing. He has nothing to do with Jerry or Steven. The I balls don't... in Odell's court. And yeah, no, we know the balls in Odell's court and doesn't have anything to do with Jerry or Steven. And I know Steven is out there doing, and Steven and Jerry are doing their due diligence like they normally do. But, I mean, yeah, the balls in, in Odell's court, he can pick and choose wherever he goes. But it, Jerry Jones is the greatest producer, greatest salesman to ever live, in my opinion. Um, and I think he can uh, pitch he is. Dallas to OBJ and he would come here. He's coming. He's coming. They're just like playing us like freaking little puppets. And I love it. So it's all good, you know. It's a done deal. And you know what the best fucking part of this entire conversation is? Where? I'm going to tell you what the best part of this conversation is. And this has nothing. It's not personal. You know, it's business. As much as we would love him here, we don't need him. We got a great team anyways. You know what I'm saying? We're on the rise. We would love his presence. We would love his energy. We could love everything that he could bring to the Cowboys. But guess what? 
we don't need him either. You know what I'm saying? Because we could yeah. still win. We could still score. We still got the best defense. We still got, you know, great receivers. We got Tony Polar on the rise. We got, you know, Zeke getting healthy. You know, and as much as we would love to have him as a wide receiver and be out there and catch those catches like CD, we're still going to do that with or without him. So as much as I love you, OBJ, and as much as I want to see you here, we wish you the best, but we're going to be fine without you. But come, 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 come. No, and, and look, do, even Duke agrees with you. We don't need him, but God help us if CD got hurt and we don't have another wide receiver. I mean, I mean, that's – we. we he's right. If one of our receivers, again, gets hurt, I mean, no, I, no, I, I understand. We got, we got – um, um, I understand um, we got Gallup. Gallup is – Gallup yeah, but he's co- he's still coming off that Gallup injury. Gallup should be good by playoff time. So I mean, I and I get it, and I'm sorry, but I'm first of all, no bad juju here. We shouldn't even be saying that type of negative energy because I don't like that. You know what I'm saying? And CD is young; he's good. I don't see him, you know, getting there. But obviously, shit happens. We've seen it with Dag. But guess what? We rose to that occasion as well. So we are determined and we're ready. You know, so we're good. Yeah. No, no, I'm with you. Um, Can we just talk about Aaron fucking Rodgers? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So, I don't know. You Okay, hold on. You start talking about Aaron Rodgers. I'm going to get another beer real quick, but I can hear you. So, you keep talking. I'll be right back in like five seconds. <sighs> okay, so, Aaron fucking Rodgers, right? I grew up in a Packer household, okay? Before me be even becoming a Dallas Cowboy fan, I was, I well, I was, because I'm in the middle of a separation right now, with a cheese head. So I'm telling you, I know everything about Aaron Rodgers and the fucking Packers. And I'm sorry, I'm a huge Aaron Rodgers fan. I think he is fantastic at what he does. And I hate to see him go down like this. But you know what? You put yourself in that environment. So it is what it is. And when it comes to playing with my boys... You know, I, I I I love my boys, and I'm being realistic. If Green Bay had a better team, then yes, I could see it even being a good game. But as far as what I'm seeing right now and the way things are gonna go, it might not even be close. So, you know, I'm ready for yeah. Sunday. I'm ready to see Aaron Rodgers, and I'm ready just to put this one to bed so we can get to more exciting things. No, I'm a. I'm going to keep this comment up because I'm going to... And I'm going to do the same thing you did. I'm listening. Go. (laughs) Uh, I'm going to have to keep this comment right here. Uh, Like my friend was saying, Aaron Rodgers is on the downward trend. Aaron Rodgers doesn't have wide receivers, or he does, but yet... Tell me why his wide receivers are so frustrated with him. Because guess what? Aaron Rodgers is blaming his wide receivers for not being able to catch footballs. Well, let's face it. It's Aaron Rodgers. I mean, look at what he did last week against. against Okay, don't want to go over there. (laughs) <laughs> look! Look! Look at what! Look at what! Uh, Aaron Rodgers did last week against uh, the the Detroit Lions. And he made Rodgers, him look like the, the eighty five Bears. Yes. Yeah, he made him look like the eighty five freaking Bears. Three interceptions inside the twenty, inside the red zone. Three interceptions, and you're gonna sit there and tell me that Aaron Rodgers is gonna upset the Dallas Cowboys with who? Your their pass rush is gone. Their their safety just had season ending surgery. Uh, like I said, the past one of their guys had tore his ACL or Achilles, some shit like that. Um, so th- this team last week, I mean, I get notifications on Bleacher Report. I'm not kidding you. It's like at least once a day, every day last week, I was okay, getting an, an update of someone from the Packers getting hurt. Everyone, like I'm not kidding you. There's no way Aaron Rodgers we're gonna go up to Lambeau and lose. I, I don't think it's happening. I think Tony Pollard had his coming out party. Now, this is where I think Tony Pollard, and here's an interesting stat. Since high school, since he last left high, since he was last played in high school, so college and the the times he's been in the pros, he has not had carries. He has not had to carry the ball over 15 times. 14 has been his limit for whatever reason. But I think this is a game that I think we're going to – Control the clock like we always do, and to- and if Zeke don't play, Tony the Ken is going to get the start, and he's going to get about fifteen to twenty carries because I think he's this is where he has to show that he can be the workhorse in case we don't bring Zeke back next year because we're going to have to pay Tony Pollard, and I think this is the year one of the the 
This is one of the years where we can get out of that 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 uh, horrible Zeke contract that we have. So for me, you know, I I don't see no upset coming at all. Well, no, 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 absolutely not. I don't see that either. Um, I think that Aaron Rodgers will come out playing, and he's gonna do the best with what he's got because he's on the verge of being benched. That conversation is getting hotter and hotter, and it is like, okay, when are we going to sit him because he's not producing? So I think that he's definitely going to come out and do his best just because of the conversation that a lot of the analysts and a lot of the sports teams are talking about of him, you know, potentially getting benched. Um, I think our defense is going to have a field day with him. I feel bad for him. You know, I think that he's definitely – you know, he needs to get protected in the pocket and, you know, cause we're coming, we're coming, we are coming for him. Um, you know, uh, we are two and uh, seven and two against him, you know? Um, no, no, he's seven and two against us. I mean, yeah, well, you know what I meant, but anyways, <laughs> I guess. So no, but there's some people on here that, that will us, roast you. So that's but, why I had to, you know, and, and I'm going to tell you this as much as I'm not a big fan if McCarthy does not come and whoop their ass, I, you know, he knows them inside and out. He want to shed tears on the, uh, uh, on conferences. You know what I'm saying? Before the game, talk about, yeah, me and him talked and whooped him. Like, why are you talking to the enemy? You know, leave that for after the game. You know, or what, you know, Green Bay be, uh, means to him, great. Congratulations. But you need to come there and you need to whoop their ass. Like, plain and simple. You know, they fired you. So you need to come and you need to show them, you know, what a mistake they made. And you got this great hot quarterback right now and you got the best defense. And if you don't come to whoop some ass, then I'm sorry. Like, I don't want to even talk to you. And happy birthday, coach. Sorry. Sorry, I'm talking shit, but happy birthday. You know, today's McCarthy's birthday. No, it was yesterday, you know, so he's a little Scorpio. So I can see his little sensitive side, which is great. And that's fine. I'm a Pisces. We water signs together. However, when it comes to the opposition, we don't talk to them till after the game. Not before the game, after the game. Yeah, I don't even talk to my opposition. Even if I was friends with them even before. I didn't didn't even talk to them before or after. I mean, of course, we had to do the... Oh, good game. It was like As when a I'm coach, not. I wanted to come and shake your ass after I oh, shake your ass, shake your hand. <laughs> okay. well, yeah, I, shake my ass. <laughs> I wanted to come shake your hand after a game just so you could make sure that a girl beats you because uh, that's just how boys get all hurt when a woman beats you. At, at, you know, it's something. Yeah. So I would be like, yeah, you can coach and smile. But yeah, yeah no, McCarthy I... is, uh, he needs to come in there. No, yeah, no, for sure. I want, I, like, to me, this is. I I don't know if if it's McCarthy helping Kellen Moore along, but you've kind of seen the way this year when Dak went out and like this was like we were talking the last time. This was my silver lining was Dak getting hurt and Kellen Moore having to step up his game because his play calling was very stagnant the past couple <laughs> of years, especially in the playoff game week one where we look like hot garbage. Um it just it, it didn't look right. And then all of a sudden Dak goes down. Um Kellen Moore, you know, calls a more balanced attack run game. That's what we've been wanting. I'm not I don't know if uh Mike McCarthy had a hand in it. I would hope I would think he did because it looks like it's a completely different um Kellen Moore with every once in a while the, the Kellen Moore that we're used to will come out and it'll be some sort of trick play at the wrong time that kills a drive. Um, but I, but I think that, 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 uh, Mike McCarthy is actually helping, helping Kellen more along. And I, I really think that with what we got right now, we're going to put up points on that, that Packers defense. Cause a lot of their guys are hurt on the defense side of the ball. A lot of guys are hurt. And you're talking about how we're going to get after Aaron Rodgers on the defense side. I'm with you right there. We have trouble. Look now. And I said this last night in my own stream. We have trouble with mobile quarterbacks. I mean, you looked at Jalen Hurts. We kind of had trouble with him. You look at, um, what's his name? Uh, <coughs> I mean, Daniel Daniel Jones isn't mobile. 
Like, like he, I mean, he can be, but we had trouble with him. We had trouble with uh, Justin Fields, who's a mobile quarterback. Aaron Rodgers can't move like that anymore. He can't. And I want to say it was Sam Williams who said, this is the fastest defense he's ever seen. Yeah. And, and let's be real here. This defense is fast. And if you can't move and you can't escape out of the pocket, I'm thinking we're going to get about six, seven sacks this game. Yeah. I'm thinking. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's what I'm up there. Six, seven yeah. sacks. Yeah. I don't think Aaron Rodgers puts up 10 points on this team. I don't think that happens. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. I, yeah. You're right. I, don't th- I mean, with what wide receiver? I mean, he's blaming his wide receivers for not being able to catch. His wide receivers are frustrated with him because he's using them as the escape goat. I mean, if I'm a wide receiver and I'm playing with Aaron Rodgers and he's blaming me because he looks like ass when he's playing, you think I'm going to want to try my hardest when he overthrows something and he I need to go up and get the ball? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I mean, let's face it. Uh uh, Aaron Rodgers looks like he's – I'm not saying he's on his way out, but he's looking like he's heading close to retirement or trying to be – or or forced out or whatever it is out of Green Bay. I mean, he doesn't look like you said. He doesn't look like the Aaron Rodgers of old. No, he's still all. on contract. He's got like that um, – like he's guaranteed contract through another year. Like he's not – they're not trading him. Like the only reason he would leave is if he leaves on his own. Like he is not – He's not leaving. Like, he's got that guaranteed $93 million. I don't know how much. He got a shitload of money. But, you know, I, I think that they but put, he can two, be they put he They can't... definitely put all their eggs into their basket with Aaron Rodgers because, yeah. you know, they're not getting what they thought they were going to get. But you know what, though? It's not his fault. You know, it's not his fault. And 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 who was it, Devontae Ad- Adams that left, right? Devontae Adams, yeah. Yes. So, like, had he been more um, fucking sure of what he was doing off season, then they, he would have stayed, and then we would have, we probably would have been having a different story. But they definitely would not have had that record. So, well, even I mean, Devontae Adams is struggling over there, and in in, in in with the Raiders. <laughs> Oh. Even he's struggling over there. No, oh, that's tough too. And the Raiders are doing horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Horrible, horrible. But no, it, it should be a good game. I, I see us I see them what? I, I say thirteen to thirty four. Thirteen to thirty five. That's my if, if if I mean I don't know I I feel like we need to be talking some smack on on Dak again so that way he can get his run game going because that's what happened the last time. Well, then forty two. <laughs> okay, you're right. You're right. I take that back. So I'm gonna had... go six. No, thirteen. I'm gonna go thirteen forty two. Forty four. I always like that forty four when I do betting. Forty four. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and you're and you're you're the money line girl. You know how to do all you. You've been doing that for the long for a long time. Oh my god, I do money lines all the time, and I uh, they're favored to win. I don't even know what the odds are to be telling you because I'm not playing anything right now. Um, but they're favored to win, so it should be a good game. It should be a, um, I mean, it should be a good game, and we need to be ready for the Giants, and we need to be ready for fucking the Eagles. So. You well, know. see, and, and and here's the thing. I'm not trying to jump ahead, so but but we have the Packers t- uh, Sunday. We have the Vikings the following week. Oh, that's gonna be amazing. Oh, and then really and amazing. then and then on a short week we have the Giants. Now the Giants, one of their their left their rookie left tackle, he got hurt. Right. Uh, I don't know if he's if he's back playing or not. But then on the bye week, Xavier McKenney, their 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 star safety. Broke his hand four wheeling in va- on vacation, so he's out for a few weeks. You know, so that defense that they got, I mean, that secondary is gonna start to crumble. All we got to do, you I'm, what? No, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. no. All we got to do is make sure we maintain like what we did la- the last time we played them. But we got it. We we got number four back, right? We got number four back. We're gonna like 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 I've been saying for me. And and I don't know how much you know about how I feel about Dak. Um, if Dak continues to play, if he plays the way he did against the Bears, 
where he throws for 250. I don't want to see 400. I don't want to see 450, 350, and we it's a shootout and it's a close. You know, we lose or something because Dak's trying to throw the ball too much or Kellen Moore has Dak throwing the ball. I want to see a balanced game, and if we can stay balanced against um, the Giants on Thanksgiving, we want every Cowboy fan will have an amazing Thanksgiving with turkey, mashed potatoes, all the all the stuffing, everything, and then a cowboy win. I yes. you know yes. and I think the Jonas brothers are performing. So if you like the Jonas brothers well, they're, they're from performing Texas, on Thanksgiving. Of course we love the Jonas brothers. They're from Texas. Um yeah no it's gonna be great. We definitely you know should test his arm if we need to but the running game is where we want to keep our our offense at so it should be good it should be just a really good game i'm super excited like you know just just so excited to watch them play i mean this bye week sucks so oh yeah no you had no idea i was watching the bye week i mean i'm sorry i was watching football during the bye week and i was just like oh my god i'm, I'm fucking bored like i know like i, I know. got i got nothing nothing to do i was at work you know i would go I was watching the command and, and I, I was watching the commanders and I wouldn't say I was rooting for them because I, I wasn't, but if they won, I would have been happy in the sense that, holy shit, we have four NFC East teams all in the playoffs right now. Like, if, like if the season ended, it'd be four every C, every NFC East team would be in the playoffs. And not that I want to see them or any NFC East team in the playoffs, but just for us to be the first team, since, just since we're the first team to have every team in our division have a Super Bowl, and we would be the first team where every team in our division would make a play, would make the playoffs. Like that's something cool to see. As much as like I don't like the I don't like Washington, I don't like the Giants, I don't like the Eagles because we're Cowboy fans. But still, that's you know you're a football fan. That's something cool to see. You know what I mean? So like. I wasn't rooting for them, but if they won, I would have been like, holy shit, look at the NFC East because of what we've been called in the past. And, you know, I feel like we're rising up and this is going to be a competitive division. And I, and I love that. I love having a competitive division. Why is nobody talking about all the BS the commanders are going through, though? You know, off, oh, the, off the, the field. Off, yeah, off the field. And now... How? The name change makes total sense, too, as well. And all these lawsuits and them being sued by everybody and their mama. So, I mean, like, it is, they just need to go high under a rock right now. I would suspend their entire season, but whatever. So, you would suspend their entire season. I would. I would. I would. Nobody's talking about it, you know, and, and nobody's talking about it to save face. And, uh, Roger Goodell is in some deep shit, and I highly doubt that he will make it past this year. You know? Oh yeah, I, I mean, I saw that. Like, I didn't read the story, but I saw the notification come through. So Goodell and Dan Schneider were in cahoots, weren't they? With with. I don't know the whole thing. I mean, I'm just reading off of some headlines, but I read more into the story, and there's so much depth behind it, and they're really trying to like hush hush it under the rug and not make us focus on it because it's definitely be staying out of people's mouths but it's going to be a great documentary one day for sure you know what i'm saying because and somehow john gruden became the scapegoat for all of this shit it's crazy it's just crazy <laughs> like john gruden is not even i don't think he was ever a washington coach at any point in his career and somehow he gets the shaft being over there in oakland because they were still over there at the time like it's <laughs> it's like how does that even happen Hey, what goes around comes around, and he's, he's just getting caught right now. I don't know what's going on, but whatever. I don't know. It is what it is. But, yeah, so, I mean, it is what it is. Nobody talks about the good stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No. Um. So that bear, okay. So we, we didn't do the show last week. So last week was our bye week. The week before that, we did play the Bears, and we went and we beat them, what, 49-29? It, we, we put up 20 points. This is the first time we have gone above 24 points all all year long. It was beautiful. It was just so fun to it watch. It was. It, it was. was great. And you know what? We have to talk. All that shit we talked about, Dad. Remember? Yeah. You remember? No. All yeah. You, I mean, you, you, you messaged me. Yeah. 
Yeah, remember we were just like, I felt like he must have watched our shit. I really did. I knew he was watching because he knew we were not having it. We were not happy yeah. as fans. We were not happy at the way things were going. And I know it was the Bears. I don't care. But it was a good way for him to step his game up. And I yeah. think this next game is going to be the same way. And then the Vikings are going to be a real test. And, you know. But no, I feel like this was, was a I feel like this was a get right game for Dak Prescott. Um, like you said, it was the Bears. So it's like mm, it's the Bears. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But this was and, and, and the Lions was a good test to come out against. Um, I mean, it is the Lions worst defense in the league. But let's be real. Let's be real with the Lions. If Noah Brown does not fumble, right, if he doesn't get flipped over and the fumble doesn't happen and they actually score before the half, we are ha we would be having a different conversation of, oh, it was a close game going into half. They, I don't know if – I, I can't remember if they took the lead or not. But then Dak, you know, you know, we ended up, you know, kind of blowing him out. You know, what was it, 24 to 6 or whatever it was. You know, the if Noah Brown – The first half of the game did not dictate the outcome i thought no 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 it didn't but but you do hear people talking about how oh this game was a lot closer than what the score actually dictated yeah it did but at the same time if noah brown doesn't fumble and we actually go up two scores uh um before the half we're not having that it's a different conversation it's a Dak looks great Dak looks this Dak, you know the the cowboys are a different team but because he because of that fumble of noah brown and i'm not blaming noah brown because someone that gets upended like that lands on their head and the ball pops out i mean you can't really sometimes your body just goes limp for a second you know what i mean yeah yeah and shit happens you know yeah. i'm not really blaming anyone for that it was a crazy hit fell on his head ball popped out i'm not blaming anyone but what i'm saying is is if he doesn't fumble and we actually score and we're up two touchdowns and we do score Two more in the second half, and we go up 31 to six. People we're having a different conversation. And it's like Dak played two great games instead of just one. And then last, like I said, two weeks ago when we played against the Bears, the get right game for Dak. And I honestly feel like if he can stay the course of what he's doing right now, where he's not trying to play hero ball and he's playing within himself and within this offense, and we rely on the run game and we rely on the defense, and Dak is that game manager. I don't think I, – I honestly don't know who can beat us. I really don't. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. No, we're looking good. We are looking good. I think, you know, we did have the same record at this time last year. So we're definitely – but with a whole new different team. And I feel like – I feel like just this season we're a way better team. In the way that we're playing, this defense is on fire. We're starting to click. We get OBJ. I mean, it's 11, 11, 11. Mark my words. We will be in the Super Bowl this year. Ooh, that would be amazing. Oh, my God. We would have to go to Arizona. I don't care. Like, we would just. Oh, my God. That would be amazing. The last time the Cowboys were in the Super Bowl, it was in Arizona. Oh, really? Oh, my God. Yeah, in 95. <laughs> in 95. Oh, we beat we beat Pittsburgh. We beat Pittsburgh. Um, I know. Yeah, I know. I know you're a new Cowboy fan, but yeah, '95. The last time we were in the Super Bowl, it was in Arizona. I actually have that Super Bowl hat. Do you? I actually have it. Yeah, and I got the desert, the the cactus on the side of the hat and whatnot. Yeah, I got the Super Bowl hat like hanging on there over there in the front room. Oh my god, so. I love it. Arizona is it in Flagstaff? Oh my god, it's so nice there. I wonder. Yeah. What Oh, and then it's Super Bowl XXX. Oh. <laughs> would it, right? That shit would have been in Vegas. It would have been so much better. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even want to know what would be going down in Vegas. I know, right? If, if oh. it was exit. <laughs> I, I was about to say something, but I'm not going to say it because, like, we have it's. kids a, watching. Come I got on. kids watching. And, I mean, when I used to go out and party, my friends would, when XXX would be said, we'd, we'd have a saying, but. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> now I'm no. curious. DM me. I want to know. <laughs> that is so funny. No, it's I. Um, I think that if we can get past the Giants and I think that once we get through, if we could get, if we could beat the Vikings, 
We are definitely. No, I don't think if. I think we're going to beat the Vikings. To me, I don't think the Vike. We own Kirk Cousins. Let's be real here. Look, you got a fan here. You can reply to him. I'm going to grab another beer. What does he say? What did you say? Oh, my God. He says, wow, uh, wow, that a gorgeous lady you have on live. Oh, stop it. I just, a girl that loves sports. Thank you. But anyway, so, yeah, no. I think if we could get through the Minnesota, we'll be all right. We'll be all right. Yeah, no. Like, so, I'm not saying I'm worried because I'm not. But you do have the 7-1 and one uh vikings you do have minnesota uh not minnesota sorry uh the titans who are leading their division at five and three and yeah nobody's Derek, really talking about that but yeah they're good too. Derek henry is a concern for me because just yes. because our run defense is suspect so yes i mean i mean that, that that's that that's up in the air for me yeah. i mean what what before, going into the season what did you did you have a record pr- prediction going into the going into the season for the Cowboys? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I said uh, well, 17 games, right? Yeah. I said 14 and 3. 14 and 3? Yeah. 14 and 3, 13 and 4, but 14 and 3, you know? That's, so, that was in my heart of hearts what I wish, but that was that was good enough, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, we're right where we were last season year so i mean like we're just getting over this first half of the season so we should be good especially the way we're playing and our our schedule you know it's a yeah. little tough but we should be good yeah no i got so i got laughed at out of the what building you get? Because, what you estimate so like i said if you would have went on the shows that i went on with some hardcore eagle fans after they did what they did when they got when they had their draft when they when they when they dra- traded for AJ Brown and we lost um Randy Gregory we traded away Amari Cooper all that stuff i looked at the schedule and we started having conversations and i got laughed at when i when i told told them last year we went 12 and 5 with a harder schedule with a little bit of a harder schedule this year i mean you're going to sit there and say we took a step back i don't think we did but we have a very cupcake schedule. Even if we are below 500. No, the you know who has a very cupcake schedule? It's the fucking Eagles. And, uh, you know, that's who has the fucking little fucking bitch ass cupcake schedule. And all this blah, blah, blah from the fucking Eagles fans. I hear your posts. I read your comments. I don't know why y'all love fucking talking crazy to me. But y'all got some cupcake ass schedules. So shush, 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 shush. Okay, I'm sorry. So, no, so, so I'm going to say this just so you know, which I'm sure you do. You know, you've been a fan for for a little while five now. Minutes, so for five minutes, I know. Go ahead. <laughs> so I don't care. I'm we have we play the exact same teams, right? We play the exact same teams, minus the three teams that we played that we've been in. The, like we have, we, they don't play the Rams, they don't play Cincinnati, and they don't play the Bucks. So it's the only three teams that we play that they don't. Every other team that they play, the Bucks beat us. Yeah. No, 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 no. What I'm saying, what what I'm saying is, is that the Eagles don't play those guys. Yeah. They don't play this. They don't play Cincinnati. They don't play the Rams. They don't play. They don't play the Bucks. They play three other teams in those divisions at the at the same rec, not record, but same uh, where they were in the division last year. So the AFC West, they they play the second place. The 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 a- a- NFC South, they play the second place. The the AFC uh, what what is North, they play the second place. So those are the three teams that just differ that that are different, but every other team we play the exact same team. So yeah, they have a little bit more of a cupcake schedule than I than we do, but so do we. And what I was telling these guys was, look, I don't think we got any worse. I think we got a little bit better um, just by who we drafted and what we got going on. I felt that we were going to go twelve and five. I was like, last year we went twelve and five. With a little bit of a harder schedule, y'all say we took a step back. So I'm gonna give us 12 and five, and I and I did my whole spiel, and I got laughed at. I got laughed at, and I made a few bets because a lot of guys over there on that 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 side of the field over there were talking about, oh, y'all aren't even gonna win eight games. Y'all are gonna be at the bottom of the barrel, the basement team, yada yada yada. This, this, and that, and the third. And guess what? We already have six wins. We're six more away from my prediction. 
that I think is going to come, that I know is going to come true, and we're sitting at second place. And what if? And I'm just saying, what if? What what happens if the Eagles start to lose a couple games while we're still winning? And they will. And then we and go to will. Christmas Eve. Yeah, they will. And we they go will. to Christmas Eve. We they go to will. Christmas Eve, and we beat them, and we tie, and we tie. And guess what? It's going to go to point differential. And and if we beat them by a larger margin than what they beat us, guess what? We're in first place. Now, these are all big what-ifs, obviously, but I'm just saying, like, don't we're, don't count us out. You had 14, four, uh, 14 and, and 3. I had 12 and 5. We're not far off. Um, to me, this, this has been th- – this has been such a surprise team for me, to be honest with you. I really didn't think that we were going to – I did think 12 and 5 because of the schedule, but – I thought it was going to be a tough 12 and 5. I didn't know that Cooper Rush was going to come in here and this defense was going to hold it down the way it did. Now we got Dak back. We're going to be able to put up points and still the defense is going to be able to hold it down. So I'm like for me I'm just and then you look at the other teams like the Packers who were in the playoffs last year, the Bucks that just beat us last year and this year. The Niners don't look the same. They beat us last year. I'm not really worried about any of these other, including the Eagles in the playoffs. I'm I'm not not really worried about anyone. I don't, don't, I'm not worried about anybody, to be honest. Not the way we're playing. Like, I mean, whoever we play will be a great game if we, you know, get there. But I think that if we keep building our confidence and keep, doing what we're doing and just improving every game we're unstoppable you know and bringing odell in his energy and bringing that leadership and and can we just this annoys the shit out of me why why are we talking about not having leadership on within the team isn't that Dak's job? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And why are we saying there is no leadership? Why are we saying that we need to bring somebody like OBJ to bring in that type of energy? So we can't rely on bringing in somebody else to create that vibe and that camaraderie within the team. Somebody in that team needs to step it up and carry that weight, that torch, that, you know, momentum all the way through to the playoffs so that we can gain confidence within ourselves and within the team so we can get to that next level because it's not just skill. It's also confidence, and it's also uh, the belief within yourself that you can get to that level. So those guys need to just rise on every occasion so we can just – get Jerry a championship ring. I really, really, really want to see Jerry Jones get a ring. And I was so inspired by Dusty Baker getting his first championship as a coach because I'm a huge baseball fan and I'm a huge Dusty Baker fan. And just to see, that was, first of all, shout out to the Astros. You know, they were playing Philly. And if that didn't excite you, you know what I'm saying? It was amazing. No. I mean, I, I hate the Astros because I'm a Rangers fan. But I hate Philly so much more. I went out and spent $30 on a Astros shirt. And I had my old hat. I had an Astros hat. And I wore those motherfucker things. And I watched the game. And I watched them win. Like I baseball is life for me. I mean, you, that's I one thing. I don't know if you know that baseball, baseball. I played in high school. I played in college. I, I, I did all that. Um, I, my, my whole left side of my body is jacked up because of baseball. Oh, wow. I had, I've had Tommy John surgery. Ooh. I've had, I've had labrum surgery. What position did you play? I was a pitch. Oh yeah. In college, I was a pitcher growing up. I played, all of outfield, I what played was, first what's base. What's your ERA? And what's your best ERA? My okay, so in college, in college, I want to say I forget what it was. Um, it was in the twos, but okay. high school, but in high school, I was all state in high school my senior year, but my junior year was like 
barely above a one. And then I think my senior year, I was at a point nine three. Okay, Mariana like, Dustin Bearlander over here. <laughs> no, no, I didn't throw. I didn't throw in the nineties. I threw mid eighties, touched a couple of high eighties from the left side. Um, but I lived on the corners on the outside, and and I was compared to Greg Maddox. I'm not oh, even kidding Greg you. Greg Maddox was a beast. Yeah, I was. I mean, he's a guy that didn't throw hard either. He threw mid 80s, yeah. touched high 80s. But he got you. But, but, you know, his control was on point. My control was on point. I lived on the corners. I wasn't a big strikeout guy, but like I said, I, I could, I could spot my, 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 I could spot my pitches where I need them. And, and my ERA was low. My, uh, my, my favorite story, uh, and my favorite story is, one of my favorite stories is, is I'm not playing the game. I'm not playing that game. It's my senior year. At that point, I just become a straight, uh, just a pitcher. I'm not even playing first anymore. Um, so my coach brings me in, and we're in a tournament, and we're playing one of the high schools down here, and it's two outs. It's the bottom of the six, and we're, we're, we're split, we play seven inning games. It's the bottom of the six. There's a runner on first. And I look him, I look him down, and I go back to home, and I look him down, and I go back to home, and I act like I'm about to pitch, and I do my pickoff, and he, he fucking, he takes off running. I was like, okay, he's done. I picked him off. He's done. And I heard because, like, even though San Antonio is a, a big city, um, I call it, I, I've always called it one of the biggest, smallest cities in the country because it's like everyone knows everyone pretty much. Yeah. If you run in the same circles. And it was funny because a lot of the a lot of those high school guys I knew growing up, and they told me that like yeah, the coach was pissed at him, and throughout the rest of the week when we'd see him in the hallway, like we'd start yelling back, like as if I was picking him <laughs> off. Yeah, and 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 yeah, it was. That's funny. I yeah. love it. No, it's, baseball is is beautiful. It's just poetic. It's it just, is. I love it. I it's lo- something I love about it. baseball. I don't people say so boring. How do you watch baseball? It's like how do you not? Like how do you like sports and not like baseball? Look, like, look, I, look I'm you have it, baseball's a thinking man's game. It is. You have to be three, four steps ahead and not only be three, four steps ahead of what happened, you also gotta have for each one of those steps ahead, you have to have four different scenarios of what could happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot that goes there's into much it. That and can go on in just one play, you yeah. know? Oh, my like, God. Like, t- look, I'm going to tell you this. Baseball I've played my whole life. I love playing it. It is boring to watch. I cannot stand to watch it on TV. I can't go through 162 games and watch. But if I had season tickets to go watch every game in person, I will be at every game in person because it's so much fun to watch in person. But playing – is a different story. I just, I loved the feeling of playing. And I'm not going to lie. Like, it's funny because of me being a pitcher. And I knew how good I was. But I was really humbled about how good I was. But That's like I said. I, That's a good but, but, but like I said, I knew how good I was. And every time we'd play someone, when, I, when we were 15, 16, 17 years old, guys would start to bring their girlfriends to the game. Right. They'd yeah, start yeah, to yeah, bring. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so I'd be, you know, paying attention on pitching this game. I'm, I'd be paying attention and be like, OK, who's bringing who to the game and That's who's in the funny. stands for who? And then I'd figure out who's with who. And I'm like, OK, this uh, today I'm going to make this guy look like a jackass. I'm going to make him look bad. Then and, and that's just that was me. That was my cockiness with myself. But then when I went out and I. With everyone else, I was humble with how I was. Like, that's I had so to relieve funny. that cockiness somewhere. No, yes. And that's what sports are for. I mean, absolutely. That's what they're made for. Yes. My love and my heart belongs. I love football, but I grew up a basketball fan. So yeah. basketball for me is everything. You know, I'm way better at basketball than anything else but um and even just from coaching and stuff it's just something but i i just watching dusty baker get that you know get that satisfaction not only as a coach but you know he was a player and being 70 something and you know when you think about being that old and 
you know, how many games they play throughout the season and their schedules and how it's hot. It's the summer. And I mean, there's so much commitment and dedication that goes into that. So I was just very happy to see him get a championship ring and my heart automatically went to Jerry, you know, like just, I want Jerry Jones to get a championship ring so bad, you know, just because if I think he deserves it more than anybody out there, you know what well, I'm he saying? He has for three. Time, huh? He has three. And I understand that, but I want another one for him. Do you no, know no, no, I get it. I, uh, yeah, you you I mean, want one for you. You want, want one for you for since you've been a fan. Him in our <laughs> lifetime together. Cause, <laughs> yeah. Yes, because I have. The utterly most respect and love for fucking Jerry Jones that I just, you know, I need that number four for him. Yeah. And number, look, number four is my favorite number, period. Like, it's the money number. It's a money number. You know that? Four, four, four angel numbers. Four is a money number. I'm a huge numerology person. So I love four. I love anything in, you know. Well, I like number four has been my baseball number since T ball. Like I fell in love Uh with, I I fell in love with, well, I'm going to say my dad and I, when I was young, um, we watched a document documentary on, I mean, you've heard of Lou Gehrig's disease. Yeah. So we watch, I hate the Yankees (gasps) to say, I hate the fucking Yankees. I'm a Red Sox fan and a Rangers fan. I hate the Yankees. Hold on but... one second. Just, I don't mean to cut you off. My brothers live in Poughkeepsie. So every summer I will go up to New York and all we will fucking do is watch the fucking Yankees play. So I love the Yankees. I am a huge Yankee fan. And I saw CeCe, Mariano, Jason, fucking Giambi, Derek Jeter, fucking Alex Rodriguez. I mean, it was the yeah. But but but, but Lou, the Red Sox. but Lou Gehrig is my favorite baseball. I of course never saw him play, but I, I saw a documentary on him. My dad and I, so he became my favorite baseball player to ever play. Watching him, I modeled my game the way I play, the toughness that he had. I modeled my game after him, as tough as I am playing. But base, but number four, I wore that all the time. I have my necklace. Oh, that I has see a, you. The number four. I got it tattooed oh, on me shit. back here. Okay. So four is 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 my number. I oh, mean, my 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 custom made jersey that I had. Um, that my one of my buddies, Mike Mosh, who lives in Florida, who sells jerseys. Um, I have Boys for Life on the back and post his link. Okay, go ahead. And yeah, no, 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 no. I will, and I'll send it to you. But. Uh, his YouTube link. I'll send it to you so you can hit him up and get get it. You know, if you want a custom made jersey, you want June Bug on the back because I got Boys for Life on the back of mine, and I got number four on it because even when Dak is gone, number four is my number. Like that's that's mine, and I've had it for the past thirty years because that's how long I've been playing ball or been the in same sports. About twenty three. So yes, you four. I'm twenty three. Everything for me is twenty three. So yeah. The goat, Michael, my hero. We no, he's whole, the goat. He's. A, I don't want to hear no LeBron bullshit. No nothing. Goats. And you know, and then it's Kobe. It may be possible. So, so I'm gonna LeBron. tell you this. So the way I felt about Kobe in his remaining years as an NBA player is the way I felt about Jeter in his remaining years. I am a Spurs fan, obviously, because I'm from San Antonio, and I hated Kobe. Hated Kobe and the Lakers because it yeah, was all you will come and whoop your butt. I love the Spurs though. I mean, I just love basketball. But yeah, yeah. so I, I mean, Kobe it was Tim fan. Duncan and Kobe, right? I hated the Lakers because it was always Spurs, Lakers, Spurs, Lakers in the early two thousands. I hated the Lakers, but then once Kobe was past his prime and he wasn't the same guy, and I knew they weren't winning, I was like, okay, I'm gonna tip my hat to you because now. I don't got to worry about you. I don't got to stress about you. I know you're a great player, so you go be great. It's not like your team's going to do anything. That's the way I was. That's the way I was with Jeter. But baseball is a different animal. So I still hated the Yankees, but at the same time, I was like, 
Jeter, I got to tip my hat to you. You're the captain. I watched that documentary on, that was on him. I, I, I watched every second of it. I waited for the next one to come out. I hated the way it ended when it was just him about him and his wife. I was waiting for the next one to come out because like, there's got to be more. But it kind of just ended with him and his wife. And I was like, oh, man, y'all ended it like this. Like I think it could have been done a little bit better, but that's just me. I love it. Now, Jeter was a class act for sure, just like Kobe, definitely up there in that. So, um, and I'm sorry, but I'm a huge Popovich uh, fan and I love everything about the Spurs. Um, you know, I think Tim Duncan is by far one of the best basketball players out there. He doesn't get accolades enough. And Ginobili, oh my God. I mean, just that whole squad. I, I just... As a basketball coach, I love the fundamentals and the pace that, you know, he plays. He's always been great. And, you know, just the Spurs were amazing. And even me growing up in L.A. And, you know, I I, I was never a Lakers fan. I was always a Bulls fan. I appreciated yeah. the Lakers, you know, because I was from there and I loved everything about them. But I was a huge Michael Jordan fan. So it was always for me about the Bulls. And ever since then, I really don't have a team, to be honest. I'm kind of homeless. I love Luca. I'm not necessarily crazy about, you know, the Mavs. I would love to yeah. see Anthony Davis, you know, come over here if that shit happens, you know. But, I mean, but it's just like, yeah, you guys had a great basketball team. I was in San Antonio the night they swept. Was it the Lakers that they swept on one of their championships? They swept somebody, but we just happened to be going on our way to Corpus Christi that night. And I remember it was the night they won and everybody was out there with their brooms and it was insane. And it was just a party town. Was it, I mean, the last time we won a championship was 2014. So I don't, I don't know if we, I don't know if, I can't remember if we swept anyone then. No, it was before that. It was a sweep for sure. So. The only time, the only, I mean, aside from the. Maybe it wasn't 99. a championship game. Maybe it was a playoff game. I just remember them. No. I know, I know we did sweep the Cavs in four in 07. No, because my kid is 08. Me? Yes. That could have been. They so I actually went downtown. That, like I watched it at a friend's house. Bunch of us did, and we ended up going downtown yeah. honking and all yeah. that. So, yeah, no, I mean, it's 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 a sad feeling because when Tim Duncan got drafted, I was ten years old, and ninety nine, thirty four. Okay, so thirty four. So I was he got drafted in ninety eight. So I was ten years old. Uh, ninety nine won won a championship, and a couple years ago he retired. So. For me, it was my like that was the last bit of my childhood leaving because everything else had left. You know, I grew up, everything there, whatever. Kobe was already gone. Dirk was already gone. You know, everyone was gone already. But Tim Duncan was the last one, and the last thing there. You know, even when it comes to football, like Emmett was gone, Aikman was gone, uh, Irvin was. Every, everyone was gone, right? You know. Tony Romo was gone because, I mean, I was in college when Tony Romo started starting for the Cowboys. Like, everything was gone, and, 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 and Tim Duncan was the last one standing. And when he left, it felt like I was closing one chapter finally and opening another or, um, uh, chapter in my life because as far as sports go, 20 years of basically running the West, even though we only won five championships – now, and I wouldn't say running the West, but being a contender in the West for the for the Spurs. Like, that was – I don't know if you could ever see that again. You know what I mean? Like, 20 years of just straight running, being, being a, a contender because of your power forward like that. Like, it was, it was crazy to me. Like, and right now, like, I don't pay – like I said, I don't, really, I don't pay too much into basketball, watch it too much. Cause it's really not my sport, but I mean, I don't, I really don't see anyone dominating the way the Spurs did for so long. I mean, I don't think they had a losing season under Tim Duncan. Uh, have you heard of, uh, what are they with golden state warriors? Like, hello. Yeah. But golden state has only been, I mean, golden state's only been golden state for the past, what? Like 10 years, 10, 10 years or so. Yeah. But we're talking a 20 year reign yeah, here, like two yeah, decades. Still contenders. I mean, like we still, no, I get it. But, but once well, Clay's gone, but yeah, what once Clay's gone, once, 
once uh um, they're not going anywhere they still got a couple years left i mean yeah a couple years but I'm, I'm saying like they're not gonna touch what the spurs did from from 1998 to to what two to 2020 2020 to 2019 that was around there garbage. that was not even the players that was just pop doing that this. was tim duncan and pop yeah yeah, so. Tim Duncan. I love. Do you remember when Tim Duncan was sub as a coach? And I thought that was so great. Yeah. And it was just like, oh my god, he speaks. He speaks. He talks. I love it. Oh my god. Well, this has been fun. Yes, it has been fun. And yes. Can't wait to do it again. What next week? We'll do it. We'll do it again. We'll do it we'll again. We'll do it again. Hopefully, yeah. We'll. F- we'll get. So more. my work schedule has changed. Um. I'm I'm working uh, this next coming month, Monday through Friday, seven to five thirty. Uh, not my, Friday, excuse me. Se- uh, Monday through Thursday. So Fridays are my off days, and Saturday, Sunday. So we can do a pregame show Sunday morning before the game. We can do it Saturday night. We can do it Friday. It doesn't matter. Whatever those days work for you, we can do it. Perfect. We'll work it out. We'll definitely work it out. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is fun. I love it. Yeah, I love it too. Well, guys, well, before we head out, Ms. Juma, let them know where they can find you. Uh, Twitter. That's it. I, I hide from everybody else. I'm just on Twitter for fun and, you know. You, you need to get your uh, your uh, YouTube page going. That's what you need to do. Yeah, I will. I'm in no rush. This is fine enough. But if y'all want to just come talk shit, come talk shit to me on Twitter. I'll answer, you know, so. I mean, yeah. you have a lot of fans here, so I'm pretty sure if you created a YouTube page, your numbers would, would go up. Wow, I do it for love, baby. I'm not <laughs> here for stats. I'm here because I love my boys, you know? So, yeah, yeah. If, if you know anybody from the Cowboys is listening, call me. I, I can do a game from the – you know, we can go. Go to at and Stadium and do this live, right, you know? Oh, that'd be oh, awesome, right? Person. That'd be awesome, right? We sit outside at and Stadium, set up a table and whatnot, and we do this in person. We so do that. I am so down for that. You tell me when. We'll tailgate, and we'll have fun all day long. Oh, for so, sure. Yeah, I'm manifesting going to a game soon. I mean, so it's just, I'm excited. It's just. But you've been to games before, right? Oh, you've I've been, been to, to tons okay. of games. Absolutely. Yeah. All my cups are from games, and I have a few of them. So I collect them, and um, I really want to go. It's expensive. You know, oh, I, know. I don't like to sit in the nosebleed, so I like to sit up close, you know. You no, know, the last two it's, games it's I went to. Suite. I'm used to suites, you know, um, but we'll see what no, happens. No, the last two games I went to, I sat right behind the, the end zone twice. Yeah. So, and I paid for my buddy's ticket. I mean, he he paid me back, obviously, but, like, they were, like, 325, three-something a pop, so... We went to the San Francisco playoff game and it was over a thousand dollars. And then once I take, no, there, I, I believe it. Yeah, this was, a, this was a Philly there, game. I mean, like, yeah, this was a Philly. I every time I go to a, a Cowboys Philly game in Dallas, they don't lose. The Cowboys do not lose. <laughs> no, I feel you. No, it's expensive. I mean, like, and then I want all the souvenirs. You know, when I'm there and yeah. I want to eat and I want to, you know, it's like a whole experience. Um, so yeah, no, I'm, I'm manifesting that for sure. Oh my God. I need to manifest that. So yeah. You know, if anybody I'm single y'all, I'm recently separated. It's been a few months. So I'm kind of like, you know, testing my wife. Also, any guys kinda out weird. there, she huh? is single. So guys hit her up. No, you no, know, no, 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 don't, don't, don't do it. Don't hit her up. Don't, don't, hit, me up. don't hit her up. I thought that's what no, you were doing. You're like, tickets to the Cowboys game and you need to hit her up for game. tickets to the Cowboys game, but don't hit her up like no, that. No, unless you got a ticket for the Cowboys game, we can hit all that. <laughs> we're good. Just talk shit. I'm just like, <laughs> all right, sweetheart. Good night, y'all. Thank you for having right. me and talk to you soon. Yes, I, I, I appreciate you. And we're out, guys.